Unleash the potential with Team Group's newly released high-performance products geared towards gamers as well as creators. To learn more about the new product line and get a chance to win a PC, go to the link in the video description. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the i5-3470, which is a mid-range CPU released back in June of 2012 that was priced at around $200. This locked quad-core processor has a base clock of 3.2 GHz and a boost of 3.6 GHz, making it third fastest locked i5 that you could get back in the day, and today we're going to have a look at whether it still holds up in modern games. For the system specs, we're using an MSI Z77AG43 motherboard, 16GB of DDR3 1866MHz memory, an overclocked GTX 970 graphics card, and a 700W FSP Hydro power supply. As always, since the GTX 970 is not a very powerful graphics card, all the games were tested using lowest settings at a resolution of 1600 by 900 to avoid any GPU bottlenecks. Also, in my next video, we're going to have an in-depth comparison of this i5 and the FX8350, so if you're interested, make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to turn on the notifications. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at a couple of benchmarks, after which we'll move on to gaming results. First, we have Cinebench R15, where the i5-3470 scores 130 points for the single core and 481 points for the multi-core. Using the Corona benchmark, we're able to finish the scene in 8 minutes and 1 second, and finally, in V-Ray, we're getting 2,750 points, with our 8-year-old i5 processor. Moving on to gaming results, let's begin with The Division 2, where the i5 doesn't perform too bad. Now, the game is mostly playable and I rarely saw dips below 60 frames, but since the CPU is maxing out, there are moments where it tends to struggle. I've experienced issues such as objects not loading up right away, stuttering, or even freezes that would last a few seconds, which do happen every now and then. You can try limiting the frame rate to around 60 FPS, which should reduce these issues to an extent. Next up, we have Far Cry 5, which the third gen i5 handles pretty good, with the frame rate mostly ranging between 60 and 90 FPS. I should mention that you do get noticeable frame time spikes while driving, but other than that, the game is very playable. By the way, if you're enjoying the content, I'd really appreciate if you could just simply leave a like, and you can also support this channel by using Amazon affiliate links provided in the description down below. The i5-3470 performs great in Apex Legends. I've played the game for hours, the game runs silky smooth, and I rarely saw dips below 90 frames per second. Looking at Battlefield 5, we have mixed results. Playing Team Deathmatch, the game runs perfectly fine since there is not a lot happening and the player count is limited to 32, though once we jump into a 64 player map and get into some action, we can see the limitations of a quad-core processor. The frame time becomes a mess and the frame rate frequently drops below 40s, so if you want to play this game, you're gonna need to limit yourself to smaller maps with 32 players. Moving on, we have Call of Duty Warzone, where the i5 doesn't perform too bad. Unfortunately, the frame time isn't very consistent, which makes the game feel a bit choppy despite the relatively high frame rate. I also experienced a few major frame time spikes throughout the game, and it is something that can get quite frustrating, especially if it happens in the middle of the fight. But other than that, I rarely saw dips below 60 frames per second. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next, and here the i5-3470 is having a hard time running the game. 
mountains refuse to load, the audio doesn't work properly, and some NPCs do not function as intended or decide to not appear at all, all of which is related to the CPU maxing out. Switching to DirectX 11 though fixes all of those issues as far as I'm aware, so I definitely recommend using DirectX 11 in this title if you have a CPU with 4 cores or less. For our final game we have PUBG, and at first I thought the game was running just fine, up until the frame time started going crazy. I kept running around hoping the stuttering would stop, but after playing the game for a few hours, I realized it's not going to happen anytime soon. Basically, there are moments when it runs good, but most of the time it tends to heavily stutter regardless of the situation you're in, making the game barely playable. I've been using the CPU for around a month or so, and while it doesn't necessarily deliver an amazing performance in every modern game, I must say overall it wasn't that bad of an experience. The system felt snappy, it handled simple day-to-day -day tasks without a hitch, and given you find one for a good price, this is a processor I'd recommend getting, especially if you're upgrading from an older system or if you're mostly going to be playing less intensive games. One thing to keep in mind is that the CPU is maxing out in every single title we've looked at today, leaving you no headroom to have much open in the background, at least not without any issues. For example, I tried playing Warzone using the CPU while talking to my friends on Discord, and I kept being told that I either sound like a robot, my voice gets delayed, or that it completely cuts off for a few seconds, which is what usually happens when a CPU is maxing out. I tried locking the frame rate to around 55 frames to reduce the CPU usage, and while doing so did fix those voice issues to an extent, playing a competitive title at such a low frame rate isn't really an enjoyable experience. So if you're going to be buying the CPU, make sure you either don't have any friends, or that you're mainly going to be playing games that are not as CPU intensive. In our next video, we're going to be comparing the i5-3470 to the FX8350. It's going to be a very detailed comparison, so if you're interested, you know what to do. Either way, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to check out more of my videos over here. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.